why that happened, but it seems unusual that an MD's PA. If, you, if would you've got, if you've got that, to save me hunting. That. If you've got that to send, to save me hunting, yeah. can you bring it over. But I think, sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. And it only came it. out, and it, it only came out on Friday because I met with uh, Hannah and Liam Brown about putting some uh, formal process in for next year about holiday. Uh, entitlement and booking how how people fundamentally request that um and the reason the reason for that was um hannah made me aware last week that uh she'd been quite shocked with looking at the bonus calculation uh for surveyors bearing in mind there's a month lag so anything that surveyors have earned in October gets paid at the end of November. So she was looking at the October bonus situation. And allegedly, uh, Joe Miller had advised the, uh, the bookkeeper, Louise Miller, to pay bonus pro rata. And what that means is that this is not contractual. That was the first thing I checked and I was, shocked to see so for instance a surveyor who had only had six working days um in the month of october and had earned x x amount of uh com- you know had, had, had provided x amount of, of value pounds in terms of those surveys had been paid that bonus um percentage for those so in other words he, he he'd had three weeks off i think one week was holiday two weeks were sickness but his bonus had been calculated on the six days that he'd worked as so, opposed to the whole month as opposed to the whole month and i'm told from hannah that louise miller had said yeah i, I didn't think it was right but joe miller had told me to pay it like that so in other words the the, the you know from my point of view from hr what i said was well all you're doing is driving the wrong behaviour. So guess what? You've got high absence levels. You've got higher because you, the idea, you, you're better off being off. You might as well be off because you'll still get your bonus at the end of the month um, based on the days you've worked and not being in work for a full month. Why you would do that, why anybody would do that, I have no idea. I absolutely have no idea. I, I'm all about, you know, rewarding people yes but you're driving the wrong behaviors by making those decisions right so i wasn't aware of that so that's obviously only this come is, out this recently. is something that's come out it's only come up in the last few so what's days the, so the the holiday the annual leave thing or the leave issue is yeah. that that's been brought to you because of this email and well and, yeah, so basically, that, that where they started, Hannah, Hannah had emailed me to say, we've got this situation with a surveyor who's only worked six days. He he should, and this is, don't, these figures aren't quoted. These yeah, are just, sure, yeah. So that's normally a, a bonus or any bonuses that we, since we've started to produce the contracts of employment, have typically been around a surveyor as a threshold of ten thousand or eleven thousand pounds a month. After which, anything they earn over and above that, they are paid a bonus of fifty percent of that. So, if a bonus threshold is ten thousand pounds and a surveyor brings income in of twelve thousand pounds, there's a two thousand pound above the threshold. They get fifty percent of that. That mm-hmm. is the bonus. Uh, situation that we've in any in any given accounting period in a month yeah in a month and they are the contracts that we've been told so that is our we were told that's what you that's what you put in the contracts for sometimes it's been nine thousand sometimes it's been ten thousand sometimes it's been eleven thousand as the threshold and that was joe or alison chambers providing us with that information what has happened in the case that I've just discussed is that that person wasn't in the business for a month. They'd only worked six days. So the bonus was uh, worked out on a pro rata basis. So I don't know what six working day was, maybe 20% of that. 
So that would be maybe two, three thousand pounds uh, threshold that they've earned over and above that. And a person who has only worked in the in the month of, for six days has had a nine hundred and fifty pound bonus pay bonus for working six days. For working six days. Don't quote me on that. It's close no, no, no. To I'm, I'm not after it's the precise. That. It's the concept. And, and Hannah, asked, Hannah asked me, "What should we do?" I said, "You don't pay it. It's not contractual. You do not pay it. That is not in that uh, surveyor's contract." So, t- two questions for you then. W- one is, in the light of what you're finding here, is that going to cause some employee disruption or upset? It will. It, it, there's two ways of looking at it. I think one is they'll think, well, we've got away with it because they're not stupid. And I would think, all right, well, I've got away with it. I now have to sort myself out. The other is that actually, well, no, that's not, I'm not happy about that because I've had, I've had, you know, I've had X amount of months where I've been paid that and I've only had to, you know, I'm not, I don't know every, and, and that without then going into, you know, a massive exercise of going back over 30 surveyors and checking every month. You know, again, it's what what uh, what justification is there for having bonus thresholds different for people on the same job? Um, different salaries, different abilities. I think different locations. So, in other words, I think that he's, I think the decision has been made based on location, potential, and all of those sort of okay. things that you know there's been different salaries for somebody in Milton Keynes as opposed to somebody in Newcastle on Tyne say okay um which you understand but bonuses has has been you know for me that again has been MD setting that um so there, there was you know so so though that's come out in the last so there doesn't appear to be a sort of a documented corporate position on how bonuses are no. allocated to contract, negotiated and then delivered. No. And this is where the meeting that not knowing this about pro rata, this has only come out in the last week. Prior to that, part of my wanting to speak to Joe Miller was about bonus threshold only because the, we were getting questions from surveyors saying, from, yeah. okay. how, how does it work? So this goes back to me saying in an interview process, you would have that. Everybody would understand. I've worked in businesses where bonuses are, you know, that's the mechanism of the business. But the, that's always been documented, clear. Um, and everybody's known it from day one sort of thing. And that's what that's how we do it. OK. And just finally, for me, then, how have you found the relationship with the company in terms of your professional expectation? and? the services you provide since Joe Miller has not been in the seat? Um, it's It's been massively different. Yes, you could say on the one hand we've been required because there's been a lot more that we've been asked to um, support on, advise on because of this situation. But outside of this situation, we've been very much, I have never work so much with a company provided outsourced HR support and Christine would say the same because we've been literally asked on a daily basis we've suddenly been asked as part of the team to shape how things could look right clearly at the moment we can't uh, be involved with any sort of restructuring and we wouldn't advocate that because there's been no decision in terms of Joe Miller's position absolutely our advice is we cannot make any restructuring decisions but we have to ensure business continuity and in ensuring business continuity we advise accordingly and for instance we got we're now being uh, consulted on issues such as the bonus such as holidays such as attendance such as probationary periods such as performance that you would expect to hr um service to be yeah, contributing towards maybe not always, uh, you know, the decision makers, but certainly as part of that process. So it's been very much different in as much as we've been asked to advise and offer um, our opinions on a lot of these areas. And I've got to say they have been listened to, but it's been about business continuity and nothing to do with a reshaping or restructuring. No, of that but business. it is about also 
best practice yeah, to protect the company. Yeah. 